pure evil MMA family. It is almost UFC 228 fight night and it's been a crazy fucking day for me here on the East Coast in Connecticut between Boston and New York. Just a whole bunch of drama that's totally unnecessary, but I got fucking pumped up watching that UFC 228 weigh-in show. To rewind, to backtrack just a little bit, guys. First off, welcome to Pure Evil MMA. I'm your host, as always, Evil Eddie of MyMMANews.com and the Pure Evil MMA podcast and Gloves Off with James McSweeney. Make sure you guys subscribe down below because we do this all the time, especially here on YouTube. We have so many new subscribers here on YouTube and I want to thank all of you guys so much. So today we are going to be previewing UFC 228. Tyron Woodley is going to be defending his title, hopefully, against Darren Till. Now, Darren Till... Came out of nowhere this year. I mean, Darren Till, if you rewind last year and you asked any, even a diehard fan who Darren Till was, they wouldn't know that much about him. Uh, when he called out Cowboy Cerrone, everyone was like, who is this guy telling us that Cowboy Cerrone has amateur Muay Thai skills? Like, what, what is he talking about? He goes in there, he beats Cowboy Cerrone. After that, he gets the matchup with Stephen Thompson, Wonder Boy, Wonder Man, Wonder Boy. So here's the thing about that whole fight. He misses weight by seven pounds. You guys heard me talk about this multiple times now. And, you know, I've shared my opinion about how I don't think it was fair that he got the title. Well, we can't complain anymore because it's tomorrow. He made weight for the title fight, which is awesome. He even came a pound under. So I am really happy about that. But here's the thing. Kobe Covington, the interim title, it's just a shit show at this point. I wish Darren Till fought somebody like Robbie Lawler before getting the title shot or even Usman or you know there, there's a list of guys that he could have fought before getting into that title shot but that's what the UFC was pushing for and I was really surprised that they were pushing for that fight and this is why his fight against Wonder Boy Darren Till's fight against Wonder Boy was not that exciting it went to the decision a lot of people like 80% of people even thought that Wonder Boy won the fight it rubbed me the wrong way you had Wonder Boy go out of his way, cross the pond, you miss weight. It wasn't the most exciting fight. And now you got the title shot. He definitely knows how to have an entrance. That entrance that he had, the, uh, what was it? Sweet Caroline. Womp, womp, womp. That was awesome. That's what the UFC needs in a fighter to promote himself outside the octagon. And also, you know, when you're at one of these live events, you know, you get new fights every 15 minutes or or less. It's not like you're at a football game where, you know, you sit there for a few hours, watch two different teams. No, you get new fighters every 15 minutes. So what's going to stick out about you that's going to make you special? That's going to make somebody go home and be like, oh, this Darren Till guy, he definitely stood out to me tonight. You know, Darren Till has that. And a lot of people are realizing that now this year. So I can't bash it too much. The title shot is now tomorrow. The big question is, can he win? Can he beat somebody like Tyron Woodley, who's beat some of the best names in that division? Let's face it. Let's face it. Tyron Woodley is so underappreciated. If Darren Till, who is undefeated, by the way, gets embarrassed by Woodley, he's going to be taking five steps back. And people are going to go, Oh, they threw him to the Wolves too fast. We knew this was going to happen. UFC always does this. Look what they did to Yair Rodriguez. Is it the same thing with Darren Till? I don't know. I can't really put my finger on it because I've watched all of Darren Till's fights in the UFC. They're not the most exciting, but they're UFC fights. He is very talented. He's definitely at the UFC caliber level without a doubt. Anyone that's going to bash a fighter for being in the UFC is just a moron. With, like, for real. To make it to the UFC is an amazing thing. And they don't give people title shots they don't think are worthy of it. And a lot of it, it has to do with promotion and this and that. But this is actually going to be a really interesting fight to watch. Tyron Woodley, if you're watching those weigh-ins just now, he was so calm, cool, and relaxed. He's been through it so many times now. He's used to that feeling of walking out, even people booing him. It doesn't bother. I mean, it would bother me. But time after time, like, if you see a car wreck, the first time, it's like, holy shit, that was traumatic. You see it every couple of months, it's not as fucking upsetting to you. Even though it might hurt, it might make you feel some type of way for just a minute. Let me make sure the live stream's up. It's not as fucking upsetting. It might make you feel some type of way for just even a, a minute, but honestly, none of that matters if you learned how to block that out. Woodley has been at the UFC level for so long. He's taken out some of the biggest names inside the octagon. Look what he did to freaking Robbie Lawler. When he was going to that Robbie Lawler fight, you know how many people were writing 
Woodley off saying that he doesn't have a chance. And he goes in there and finishes him off within the first couple of seconds. It's just absolutely amazing. Woodley definitely needs to seal this win to prove to everybody. And, you know, he's proved it time and time and time again. But this one, it's like, who is this young gun coming up? Yeah, he's undefeated, but he's missing weight. He's talking all this shit. How is he going to match up against somebody like Woodley? Who, you know, is a little old. Like, he's 36 years old. A lot of people don't talk about that. But he's so explosive in there. He times everything so perfect. Look what he did against Damian Miles. When he went in against Damian Miles, like, this is the end of Woodley. A lot of people were like, he's, he's you know, he's trying to dodge that fight with uh, with, with Damian Maia. And a lot of fighters do that because Damian Maia is so good in that one specific area. Remember when Woodley was walking around with the backpack on saying, hey, it's Maya. When he said Maya was next, let's not forget, Maya was on a couple fight win streak. He was choking guys out like like Matt Brown, people like Carlos Condit. Like it looked like Maya was on another level. People were like, in his last six fights, he's only thrown three punches and has finished all his opponents. Like it was just, it was remarkable. And I was like, wow, after that fight with Woodley, who blocked takedowns, what, 26 times throughout that fight, it was just like, it was something else to see that. Now you got somebody, young gun like Darren Till coming in here. And, you know, Darren Till, 25 years old. He's got good striking, great Muay Thai. I think Tyron Woodley is just, is, is just better all around. That fight against Cowboy Cerrone was definitely a clutch for Darren Till. Everyone knew who Darren Till was after that moment. The Stephen Thompson thing, like I said, not that exciting. But we're going to find out what happens tomorrow night. Is Darren Till going to be the new champion? Or is Tyron Woodley going to defend the title? Here's my prediction for this fight. I really believe that Tyron Woodley is going to be able to finish Till. I don't know how many people out there are going to agree with me. And a matter of fact, let me jump on to, let me jump on to Tapology really quickly. Just really quick to see what people on there are saying with their predictions. Because I always like to check out what the MMA community has in store and what they're saying for the fight. So we got right here. And first off, what are the odds for this fight? Wow. A lot closer than I thought. So we're a day away from the fight, about 24 hours. You got Woodley up at plus 125 as a slight underdog. And Darren Till as a negative 145 slight favorite. How about that? 55% of fight fans out there are going with Woodley. However, 45% of fans are going with Till. And a good majority of that number is going by knockout. I think Woodley can do it. And I think he can do it by knockout. We're going to have to see what happens tomorrow night. Let me know what you guys think about this fight. Who are you going for? Is it Till? Is it Woodley? How is it going to happen? Let me know on Twitter, evil under dash echo or on Instagram, a pure evil MMA underscore. So if you were hiding under a rock all day or you're at the gym or just away from your phone at work, wherever you were, and you missed a lot of the big headlines that came out today, well, you might be really upset about this next one that I'm about to drop on everybody. Well, first off, Mac Miller died, which I'm very fucking upset about. But in the MMA scene right now, I don't mean to laugh because I went to the package store. Like, I'm so fucking upset that Mac Miller passed away, one of my favorite all-time rappers. And you guys all know that. Finding out just like an hour ago that he that he passed away. And I, I could rant about that forever. Just addiction is just it's a horrible thing. But uh Valentina Shevchenko, she had her shot once again to get the title, hold the title. She changes weight class, goes in against Nico Montano, who, if you guys remember, was on that season ultimate fighter. She beat out veterans like Barb Honchak, Lauren Murphy, Scott Kenyon on back until all day by elbows. <sighs> I can't wait. That, this is one of the fights where, like, I really don't know what's going to happen. Is Woodley going to expose Darren Till? Darren Till has fought, you know, his last two fights, high-caliber fighters. But Woodley on a whole different level with the fight IQ, in my mind. Especially in these title fight situations as the main event of a pay-per-view. Big things can happen tomorrow night. But Valentina Shevchenko, she kind of predicted this. She was like, I am not going to believe that the fight is on until tomorrow when I'm inside the cage, when I'm inside the octagon, and she's staring me down across the cage. Until then, I'm not taking this seriously. I don't think this girl's going to show up. To her defense, to Nico Montano's defense, I believe it was like a kidney infection or something from going through these weight cuts. Stewie Griffin checking in. Squeak, squeak, squeak. Let me go to uh, the cam for you guys to see the comments in here. Valentina Shevchenko, gotta be fucking pissed. This is so upsetting. She's had such a rocky road, and in my mind, she's in her prime right now. 
Valentina Shevchenko, easily in her prime. Did you guys see her and her sister Antonina at the fucking pre-workouts? They put on a show. That was so entertaining. If I was PR for the UFC, I would love every second. I would be eating that up. Every second of that was amazing. It was like dancing. They were straight up out there dancing. They can make big things happen. Antonina Shevchenko was recently announced as to fighting Ashley Evan Smith. That fight's going to be coming up, I believe, at UFC uh, 231. Correct me if I'm wrong. No defense. Stupid motherfucking Griffin. Who are you talking about? Darren Till. Man, I, I literally don't even know what to say about that. We'll circle back around. Let me just drop this news. Uh, so, about an hour before the weigh-ins were even about to go down, we found out, and shame on me as a journalist for not letting you guys know who broke this story, but it came to my attention that Nico Montano was out of her co-main event title fight, her first title defense since beating Rock, uh, Roxy, which is, you know, the night that she won the Ultimate Fighter finale, became champ. A lot of people were bashing her. A lot of people were bashing Nico Montano, saying she's, you know, a fake champ. But in my eyes, I mean, they didn't just hand her this fucking title. She had to go through some hard-ass girls on the season Ultimate Fighter that she was on. There's a reason they put on a veteran like Barb Honchak, who was champ for how long? Unstoppable for how long? People like Roxy, number one seed. She's been through the ringer. She has the fight IQ. She's gotten better throughout the years. No one thought Nico Montano was going to be going through the season and beating Lauren Murphy. She beat Lauren Murphy. Absolutely crazy. Owen Young checking in. What's up, Brother Eddie? What's going on, Owen? Stewie Griffin, she needs to defend. I agree. This is frustrating. Not her fault, though. We'll see this again sometime soon. I'm sure Dana White has got to be pissed, but you got to be happy they didn't put it as the main event, at least. Because th that fallout happens all the time. All the time. And I was kind of relying. Like, I was kind of expecting Tilden this way. I'm not going to lie. And shame on me for thinking that. But I kind of, I wouldn't mind have see, to have seen Uzman, who was on backup, if anything happened to Darren Till. But Valentina Shevchenko, not going to be able to go in there and fight against Nico Montano. What did you guys think about that? Are you upset? Did you even care about that fight? Let's see what's going on in the chat. I mean, I'm sorry if you're listening to the podcast right now. I am reading the live uh, YouTube comments here. Scott Kenyon saying Shevchenko based, uh, bashed her in interview after, which is surprising to me. Uh, I've spoken to Valentina multiple times before in the past in person. Very shy, her and her sister. Awesome people. But she has to be so frustrated. You are an hour away from Wayne's, 24 hours away from Finally get in the strap, as 50 Cent would say. Get the strap. So close. A lot of people, when she fought Amanda, thought that she won that fight. So this has definitely got to be really frustrating for Valentina and her entire crew. Especially after, you know, going through an entire training camp, getting ready, and thinking in her head this entire time that the fight wasn't going to go through. If you guys have been watching Valentina's interviews, she's been saying this since this fight got announced. Literally been saying this since the fight was announced. She just had that gut feeling. Sometimes you got to trust your gut. It's the truth. Uh, Stuart Griffin saying not her fault. So correct me if I'm wrong. It was a, a kidney infection or something like that. That stopped her from uh, continuing to go to these weigh-ins. Which could be due to the weight cutting process. Which is fucking brutal. The reason why they opened up this weight division was so we wouldn't have these issues. And like everyone said and everyone warned us, guys, if you open up the 165-pound division, it's not going to change anything. People are still going to cut as much as they can to an extreme to have that slight advantage here in a division lower than what they should be in. Even Darren Till has said before in the past, yeah, I'm fighting at welterweight, but I am not a welterweight. And he keeps saying, if I beat Woodley, I'm going to move up a weight class. I'm going to be the champ champ. It's only a matter of time. So it's just crazy. Like, you can open up as many divisions as you want. We're still going to have all of these issues. And it's just a shame. They have to figure it out. Definitely crushing uh, to a lot of people here. All right, so the new co-main event, and correct me if I'm wrong on this one, but this is what we got at UFC. Jessica Andrade versus Carolina Kovalkiewicz. This is a fight. Like, first off, I feel like these two have already fought before. 
in the past, but obviously they haven't. But these two at some point were bound to crossways. Karolina Kovalkiewicz, kind of a rocky road after her fight with Joanna Young Zizek. But now she's on a two-fight win streak. She beat Jody Escobel, and she beat Felice. And Jessica Andrade, man, this girl, huh, what she was able to do against Claudia, and even beating Tisha Torres, she looked so good against Claudia. Just nonstop like a machine. I've never, ever, ever seen cardio as good as we've seen it that night when Jessica Andrade stepped in the octagon to face Claudia Goodell, who was the number one contender. Claudia, no one ever has gotten past Claudia besides Joanna. Now Joanna isn't even the champ anymore. Rose Nam Hunas is next. And I do believe, I do believe, let me backtrack. Let me backtrack. Uh, yeah, I, so Andrade is number two right now in the division. I'm guessing Joanna is number one. And then the champ rose. So after this, I'd say the fight to make is the winner of this will fight Joanna. And Carolina, I mean, she's already fought Joanna a couple times in her, in her career. She's lost to Claudia and she's lost to Joanna. Those are her only two losses inside, um, inside the UFC, obviously. Well, Jessica Andrade, man, this wake up for her. She definitely looked like she aged a little bit. I don't mean to bash girls or anything like this, but, uh, the photo that they had, especially at the weigh-ins when they were presenting them before they walked out, Carolina and Jessica did not look like themselves. That was not those two. And I will say I will say this. It is so funny and entertaining when you see Carolina step in there and she right before the fight, Bruce Buffer's announcing her name. And she's standing there with her arms behind her back up against the cage, looking like she should be sucking on a lollipop in the schoolyard and about to go to math class. And then here's Jessica Andrash, she's just a little freaking monster. But here's the thing with, with, with Andrade in a lot of people's minds. People remember the Yoana young Zizek fight where she went in there and got demolished every single round. Uh, Scott Kennan saying, just saw an interview 10 minutes ago. She said she knew she wasn't going to fight. Uh, Aaron Romanek. Hey, bro. Happy Friday. It's somewhat Nico's fault. It was kidney issues related to weight cutting. If she, if she was better managed, her weight in a couple of weeks out, it may have, it may have happened. You know, these, these are mistakes. I'm sure if she regrets a lot of this and thank you for tuning in, man. I really appreciate any, any, any new listener, any questions. That's definitely a good point there. Uh, but you know, she doesn't have the kind of camp or management that, you know, Valentina has. Valentina has, I mean, her Valent, check this out. If you don't know this, Valentina's coach, coach, uh, Pavlov took a fucking bullet for the girl, took a bullet for Valentina Shevchenko what, two, two, three years ago, they were, I forgot exactly where, but there was a shootout. It, this was caught on footage, too. Valentina was caught in a shootout with uh, her team. And her coach saved the girl's life. Ended up in the hospital. It's definitely crushing. It definitely is. Uh, Scott Kenyon saying, wow, Carolina looked fire. And, and she always does. She's a cute little cookie. You know, she may not have the best mic skills, but she's definitely got some talent here. This is going to be a good fight. I think a lot of people, including myself, are believing this fight's going to go to a decision. Let me check and see what the odds are really quickly for you guys in this fight. Because that's going to be really interesting. Right off the bat, I would think Jessica is favorite. A heavy favorite. Damn. Negative 455 against plus 355 Carolina Kovalkiewicz. How about that? That's kind of mind-blowing in my opinion. I wouldn't mind throwing five on Carolina here. Really don't. I mean, what Jessica Andrade is going to show up. Yeah, she has been on a hot streak lately, but you never know. And Carolina Kovalkiewicz, she's got her tools down pat, like where, where it's just like every time she steps in there, it's pretty much the same Carolina, even though she's winning, uh, losing some of these fights. You got to keep in mind, she's in the top five of this division, the best in the world. Sometimes they're going to lose until you tweak out, you know, where, where these little holes are. And when you're this close to the top, the elite of the elite. One little small mistake cost you an entire fight. I think these odds are way off. I don't think they should have been. I, like That's kind of disrespectful to uh, Carolina. But hey, what can you do here? Uh, Stu motherfucking Griffin. What the fuck? Jessica beat Claudia too. Yeah, Jessica, honestly, that fight was my favorite Jessica Andrade fight ever. She looked like a machine in that fight. The cardio. That she, it looked like she was hanging out with Johnny Bones before she walked out. Scott Kenyon saying, up yours, bro. Come on. What, what are we doing in here? 
I saw the interview. Valentina was upset, but very classy. And you got to give her that. She has the Muay Thai background up your mind. You guys are getting crazy in here. And I know you all just joking. I'm original gay agent. <laughs> all right, gay agent. Thanks for tuning in. So what do you guys have in this fight? I'm going to go Jessica Andrade here. But Carolina Kovalkiewicz definitely has a shot. I wouldn't be surprised if this goes to uh, a decision. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments here. And also on Twitter, Evil Under Dash Echo. So this next fight almost dropped out. We got Zabit. And you guys can try to pronounce his mother's, uh, this dude's last name. Zabit, who's 15th right now. Mago Medeshapiropov. That's the best I can do right now. He's coming off that fight with Kyle Bachnack, which was a fucking amazing fight back and forth. But this fight was originally... Who was this fight originally supposed to be against, actually? Uh, it was... What? To be against Yair. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This fight was full of drama here. Y Yair Rodriguez got his way after all. Said and done here. But... If you guys don't know the full story about this, it's got to be frustrating to uh, to Zabit. So Zabit was supposed to fight Yair Rodriguez. It was probably going to be a repeat of Yair versus freaking uh, Bruce Leroy. That's what I was expecting in my head. Just a bunch of spinning shit and an entertaining fight for people that that don't watch so much and don't enjoy the ground game. That fight was going to be perfect, especially for this pay-per-view. Yair Rodriguez was like, no, nah, bro, I want no part of that fight. I didn't agree to that fight. Dana White got pissed, told Yair to kick rocks. Yair actually got booted out of the UFC. Then, like, a couple weeks later, they, they figured it all out. Yair comes back, and then something happens. He gets injured, and the fight's pulled. So, you know, Yair's right back into the roster. But Zabit was looking for an opponent. Joe Gennetti, who we spoke with, uh, was so adamant that he wanted to take this fight to prove himself. And I was 100% on board with Joe Gennetti. Because if you guys didn't see the interview I did with Joe, he did not get his UFC contract. Made it to the finale. Beat John Gunther. John Gunther got the contract. Luis, the violent Bob Ross, got injured during the season. He got the contract. Well, Luis put on one hell of a fucking fight at the finale. And we, we had all these guys on. But out of all of them, it was like, Joe deserved the contract. And Joe versus Zabit, in my eyes, would have been much better than Zabit versus Brandon Davis here. So... What do you guys know about Brandon Davis? Let me fill you in just a little bit. He's 9-4. and four. He is a decent striker. He's coming off a loss to Enrique Barzola right now. He has a win over Steven Peterson. Before that, he lost to Kyle Bachnag. He's hot and cold right now. This would be the biggest win of his career. Do we expect him to go in there and finish the beat? Probably not. The beat is just such a monster. Even watching him before, coming over to the UFC was just like, it's just something else. It's so entertaining to watch. I'm so happy that this is going to be on the main card. I'm so happy that they saved this fight. I'm guessing Zabit is going to be heavy favorite here, especially on the short notice fight. He's 15-1 and one going up against 9-4 Davis. I got Zabit first round finish. What do you guys think? Let me know down below and on Twitter. Let me check in with the chat room. Zabit is going to start Davis. And I think a lot of people are expecting that. But keep in mind, in this sport, a lot of people thought that Hoyce Gracie was going to get smoked by Ken Shamrock. Go all the way back. Before weight classes. You can, the MMA gods are so cruel. When you think, like the Holly Holm fight. Who thought Holly Holm was going to knock out Ronda Rousey until all was said and done with? There's been so, who, who even thought Conor McGregor was going to knock out Jose Aldo in 13 seconds? I mean, that fight was definitely... Gonna be up there, you know, has a Hearn style, but anything can happen in mixed martial arts, guys. Anything. Look at fucking Matt Sarah knocking out GSP. That was a joke fight to a lot of people. They were like, this is just bullshit. GSP, whatever. Get through this guy. It was almost, it was even cringier to fans back then than what Tim Elliott versus Mighty Mouse was for that season. The UFC bringing guys from different organizations over because nobody in the UFC can beat the champ. That's almost what it reminded me of. I definitely got Zabit, probably first or second round finish. Underneath that, uh, I guess the pure evil MMA for the past couple of years, we watched him rise through the ranks. No one's been talking about this fight, and shame on everyone who doesn't even know this fight is going down tomorrow night. Jimmy Rivera, back in the octagon, not letting things slow him down. He got finished for the first time in his career against Marlon. 
Guy's 21 and 2. He was on like a fucking, what, 20 fight win streak before he recently lost. Fighting right out of here at the East Coast. Jumping back quick. I mean, he lost back June 1st. And, I mean, it doesn't even seem that long ago. But the right thing to do and what you see a lot of fighters do is after a loss, they want to jump back in. They want to clear that. They want to put that behind them. The one thing that worries me, though, when a fighter does that, it's like, you just got finished. Is it smart for you to come back? Are you fully recovered to come back and perform at your peak right now? I know you want to get back in there real bad, but is it the smartest thing for you to do? Because now if you go in there, you lose against Dotson, and even in a decision, it's it's going to be a low, it's going to hurt. It's it, it's going to hurt. And you got Rivera at number five right now, Dotson at seven, so he's not going to drop too much stock. But I love Dotson at this weight class, man, the magician. 21 and 9. He's coming off a win against Pedro Munoz. Before that, also losing to Marlon. I mean, that fight is going to be up there. That is definitely a pick for me, which definitely has potential fight of the night written all over it, without a doubt. I they could go to the decision, but I really believe uh, Jimmy Rivera is going to take this one. He's going to finish John Dotson. Oh, I can't, just even thinking about it. You know what it kind of reminds me of? What I'm kind of expecting it to be be like. But with not as much flat-footedness, it's going to be like John Lineker versus John Dotson all over again. That's what I see. And I thought Dotson won that fight, matter of fact. Uh, Scott Cannon. Zabit turned Labov down. Zabit turned Labov down. The GOAT. You talking about the GOAT? Artem Labov. I would, I would love to see that fight. I really would. That was the fight they should have made. That is the fight they should have fucking made. Even over the eye here. Damn. Like, they won't kick Artem out of the UFC. No. Mm -mm. Uh, SMS Production checking in. Guys, make sure to follow SMS Production. One of the best editors in the game. In the game. SMS Production, we've, know, we've known him for a while here at Pure Evil MMA. Uh, make some amazing. You know what? If you guys want to check one video out by SMS Productions, which I saw years ago before I even knew who SMS Productions was. You like that tag? Five times I'll say your name. SMS Productions, six. But, uh, he made an amazing music video, hype video for Cub Swanson called Beautiful Destruction. Remember when Cub used to come out? Go, what, 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 what are we going to see in this fight? He had the microphone over to Cub. I expect Beautiful Destruction. Boom! Just like, oh, Cub Swanson, man. Cub Swanson, one of the best in the game. And SMS Production did an amazing job putting that music video together. So go check it out on his channel, of course, after we wrap up here. 13 seconds, says Henry Ford. Labov is go. I, there's, <laughs> I love it. I love people out there get so mad when people say that too. Like they take a, they take them. It's almost like Charlie Zelenoff fans. It's almost like uh, what's the other kid that I'm all into? Uh, Vader. Oh my God. Oh, why well, can't I remember his name right now? Oh, it's gonna drive me nuts if I don't remember the kid's name. Uh, Lord Vader. Where where are you at, bro? Lord Vader. Lord Vader. Oh, Genova. Jason Genova. It's almost like Jason Genova fans. Where it's, just, it's You love the guy because it's like so unreal. It's like you don't know anybody that's like him and just so entertaining. You're in it for the men, right? You're just in it for the men. Choo-choo, motherfuckers. Like, come on. Artem isn't going anywhere. Uh, Scott Canyon, SMS production. I love, <laughs> I love it. Where's Teddy been? What the fuck, man, Henry Ford says. You know, me and Ted's schedules haven't been matching up. I messaged him the other day. He's been out in the woods doing a bunch of stuff, uh, which I don't blame him. Like, you want to try some other some other stuff right now? The content's not doing well. You're not inspired. You can't force yourself to sit and do something that you're not as passionate about right now. I and mean, this happens all the time in sports. Like, you can you go through waves or just kind of in and out, at you know, year after year after year. It's like... It could be rough, man. So I think Ted's just trying to do some new things right now. But I will expect, I'm not going to promise, but I, I would really love, even if you guys went over to Ted's page and just told him what you're, what you're saying to me, that you want to see more uh, of me and him doing shows together. I had a fucking blast. Some of the best times of my career with Ted. Some of the best conversations ever with Ted Check. So I, I would love to start that, uh, continue that with Ted. But uh, especially with, you know, he has kids and, He's a family. It's hard to match our times up lately. So that's what's going on with that, guys. Uh, Scott Cannon, Klein Vader. Uh, SMS 
uh, production. If people couldn't see Artem's record, they wouldn't think he was that bad. A gay agent. I'm in it for the men. I'm in it for the men, he says. Not the men. He's in it for the men. Okay. All right. Uh, Scott Kenyon saw him fake KO that guy outside a gym in Vegas. Uh, and I'm guessing you're talking about uh, Charlie Zelenoff. So if you guys don't know who Charlie Zelenoff is, I fell into a rabbit hole. I even made a cringe video down below here on YouTube, which if you don't know who this guy is, please go check it out. You will be so entertained. I fell through such a deep rabbit hole watching Charlie Zelenoff videos. Uh, even Deontay Wilder knocked the dude out. It just got to, it got, it was all over TMZ. It got to the point where he was getting under a lot of people's skin. If you don't know about this guy, it started out, he was just, he's psycho, man. He ate his basement, punching bags, and he would, he would literally go to Home Depot, pick a, somebody up that needed work for the day, give him 50 bucks, say, I'm going to bring you back to the gym and we're going to light spark. You get 50 bucks and go. He, he'll bring him back to the gym. Go, all right, ready? And just start throwing haymakers and drop dudes that are not expecting it. It's so cringy. It's so fucked up. I don't know how he didn't catch a case off of it. But this is continued. And somebody even put together a great documentary about it. Uh, I even told the MMA host, you got to get Charlie Zelenoff on. You have to. The GOAT, Charlie Zelenoff. But uh, Stu motherfucking Griffith saying, that guy blocked me. Who blocked you, bro? Who blocked you? Who's your favorite MMA man? Who's, who's my favorite MMA man? I say right now, my favorite to pay attention to the rise of. Honestly, let's let's make it easier. Let me pick my choice for fight of the night as we get down. Uh, this next fight is definitely top potential here because it is so much to both these girls' career. You got Carla Sparza, the former champion. Going in there against the young gun, Tatiana Saros. Tatiana has such an amazing, inspiring story beneath her. We saw her on that season Ultimate Fighter make her way through the ranks. She didn't get the title for it, but she made it into the UFC. She beat Amanda Bobby Cooper. She's looked phenomenal. This is the proving point for her. This moment, tomorrow night, against a former champion in Carla Esparza, who is back on the balance beam right now in my eyes. I think Carla Esparza. A lot of people just, they don't give her enough credit. And I believe her and Felice have both fixed a lot of their little holes that people were you know, exploiting them for. Carla Sparza loses tomorrow night, though. People will be writing her off, unfortunately. And the saddest part about mixed martial arts, the saddest part about the sport, you're only as valuable as your last three or so fights. That's just how it is, which is probably one of the reasons why uh, Jimmy Rivera wants to bounce back. Why we see fighters wanting to bounce back after a loss. But this is the deciding moment where these two girls are both on the fence. Tatiana wants to slip over to that top five, that top ten, top five side. Carlos Spars is on the fence right now, climbing back up to the top. But she needs to clear the young guns and show them, no, I still got it. I'm still top dog of the division. You still got learning to do. I've been where you're at, and I've been growing. And she has that to prove tomorrow night. That is one of my picks for Fight of the Night. Just the story behind it. I wouldn't be surprised if this fight goes to decision, three-round decision. But I'm, I'm going to be at the edge of my seat the entire time the fight's going down. Uh, Scott Cannon saying, Tatiana for me, Stewie Griffin, I agree, Eddie. Stewie Griffin saying, but I'm still mad about Valentina fight. So am I, man. So am I. I mean, just watching Valentina rise over the past couple of years, watching her sister. I, I've watched her sister cage side for the past three years over at Lion Fight. I was there for her debut at Lion Fight, right there. Nobody knew who she was. No one. So, oh, here's Antonina Shevchenko. And then people, oh, that's Valentina. Oh, there's Valentina right there. Then people are on board. Seen that so many times, so many times throughout my career. Yeah, just the rise that she's had. Now, Antonina, she's going to be fighting Ashley Evans Smith. Huge fight. Remember when Ashley Evans uh, Smith got a UFC contract because she beat Fallon Fox? Does that? Do you guys remember that? That was a huge moment in WMA. Like the week prior, we like just found out Fallon Fox. Her, you know, the, the headlines that came out that week, if you guys remember, of uh, the controversy of Fallon Fox, and then Ashley Evans Smith was the girl who went in there. 
and beat her, or however you want to look at it. That was a very controversial fight. And recently, I saw that she she got blacklisted, but Nolan King, shout out to Nolan King, saying, you know, sometimes websites will release a statement saying, oh, this fighter got released, this fighter got released. But in reality, they just changed weight classes. It's obviously what happened here. Uh, SMS Production saying, Felice is great when she lets her hands and kicks go with full speed and power, but she loves grappling too much. Sweet mother fucking Griffin. Uh... Held for review. Scott Kenyon saying gutted Valentina's not on. It, just, it seems like everyone was really rooting for that fight. I think a lot of people were actually more excited for that fight than they were for even the <laughs> even, even more than uh, the main event here. Scott Kenyon saying gay agent did. Oh, well, what are you going to do? It's You got to expect this kind of stuff when you're on fucking uh, YouTube, guys. You really do. Don't be that surprised. Come on. All right, so moving forward, uh, Alassane versus Price. Very close fight. Alassane, 9 and 1. Nico Price, 12 and run. Uh, 12 and 1. I'm going for the hybrid on this one. He's coming off that win to Randy Brown. Before that, beating George Sullivan. Two great wins right there. Alassane, 33 years old, got great Muay Thai skills. He's also coming off a couple of wins, a couple of impressive wins, so. That's another very close fight. I'm going to go for Nico Price. Then Asparza versus uh, Tatiana. Aljamain Sterling versus Stammen. Now, Sterling, he's ranked at 8th right now. And he definitely needs a win. I mean, he's got one win under his belt against Brett Jones. This is a step up, I guess, for Aljo uh, compared to his last fight. I mean, Cody Stammen, man, 17-1. and one. He's coming off a win to Brian Caraway, which was huge. Before that, Tom Dukenwa. Before that, Tarion Ware. Three very talented fighters back to back to back. This is another great fight. I wanted this to actually be on the main card. A little surprised that this is actually on the uh, on the prelims here. Underneath that, Neil versus Camacho. Going for Camacho on that one, 21-6. Bird versus Stewart. Stewart 8-3. Bird 9-4. I think Bird was on uh, the Contender Series. That one's up in the air for me. On that one. I'm going to lead towards Stewart there. But I don't know. Diego Sanchez versus White. Man, how can you not root for Diego Sanchez? I mean, the guy is such a veteran. Yeah, he's coming off a brutal knockout to Matt Brown. That brutal elbow. And then before that, a loss to Ally Quinta back in 2017. The last time Diego Sanchez won was back in 2016 against Marcin L. And before that, he lost against Joe Lozon. So, one, two, three, four... He, he's 3-1 and one in his last four fights. Three losses, one win. So, I think he can beat Craig White tomorrow night. 14-8 and eight Craig White's record. 28 years old. Great grappler. Coming off a loss to Neil Magny in his debut. Uh, then we got Miller versus White. Another White. Jim Miller, another fucking veteran. Coming off a loss to Dan Hooker. And then also lost to uh, trans, uh, Francisco Trinaldo before that. Lost to Pettis. Before that, a loss to Dustin the Diamond. I mean, Jim Miller, man. All of those fights were edge of your seat exciting, too. Which is which is a shame because Jim Miller, every time he goes in there, he puts on, he looks great. But a lot of these fights going to the decision or just not working out his way. It's just sad to see that many losses in a row. I think he can get the win here against White. Because a lot of people, they look at that and like, oh, he's lost a, whole, a handful of fights, right? But look who he's losing against, the top five guys. I always say this. I always say this. When you are in the elite of the elite of the elite, I mean, it does suck you're losing back to back to back. Maybe you don't belong there right now. But it, it, it's, it's crushing, man. It's crushing. Under that, we got another female fight, Aldana versus Pudalova. I'm going to be going for Aldana. Under that, Sanchez versus Brooks. I'm going to be going for Sanchez. 8-1, 32. He's got amazing jiu-jitsu. But Jared Brooks, man, very well-rounded fighter, like they say on UFC.com, uh, beating Jose Shorty Torres in that last fight. Oscar Stoptuzzi. Those are my predictions, guys. Just this fight on paper. If I got to rate it out of 10, like how excited I am to watch this. I'd say about a 7. I, I am decently excited to watch this. Tomorrow night, I'm going to be going... I may stay here and rent the pay-per-view because I do like watching fights alone, covering it, being in front of the computer or whatnot, not getting distracted, being able to pay attention. But I might go out to Eli's because Coach Calandrelli, Andrew Calandrelli, a uh, Bellator veteran, uh, we've had a bunch of his fighters here in studio, especially this week. We had uh, 
Hey, we had Harrison Bonfiglio. We had Harris Bonfiglio. We also had uh, Harrison Adamo. Uh, and Marissa, double MB. I mean, the list goes on and on. They're having a fight party at Eli's on the Branford Hill. I will most likely be there watching with them, watching with the fighters, enjoying you know, wings. Actually, they make these bomb ass. Uh, you guys know what egg rolls are? Like the, the Chinese, when you order Chinese food, you get egg rolls. They make steak and cheese egg rolls that are just literally to die for. I've lost 25, 25 pounds since June, believe it or not. Right now, I weigh 205 pounds. Last week, I weighed 207. On my birthday, I weighed, believe this, 230 pounds. 230 pounds. June 14th on my birthday. Now I'm back in shape, motherfuckers. So I, I probably should stay away from them. Steak, steak rolls, steak and uh, steak egg or steak and cheese rolls, but fuck it. I mean, hey, I went through a breakup of a girl I dated for seven years. I may have enjoyed a little, 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 uh, a little McDonald's, a couple of beers, gain a couple of pounds, shred it right off, jump right back in the gym, boom, gone. So, uh, but yeah, seven out of ten on my and my card here. If we're looking at this card on paper. 7 out of 10 all day. We're going to be rating it and reviewing and recapping it tomorrow night as we always do here on Pure Evil MMA. So make sure you guys subscribe down below if you want to get down on that. Also, we're available on iTunes, Podbean, Stitcher, Spotify, all that good stuff. You do not want to miss a single episode. I have so many great projects that I'm working on this upcoming weekend. I will actually be going to Lion Fight at Foxwoods Casino as usual. So I'm really excited about that. Also, guys, just I, I'm fucking really upset about this whole Mac Miller thing. I'm going to be doing a live video later on tonight, just kind of sharing my personal thought about it and how Mac Miller's affected my life because he's he has. He got me through a lot of really hard times. Uh, he's helped me stay strong just through his songs, man, just through his songs and his attitude. And it's sad. He just dropped a new album a couple weeks ago, man. It's just it's 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 fucking crushing it's fucking cr i didn't believe it i saw joe janetti share the share the uh the tmz link and i was like on facebook and i was like no i thought facebook got rid of these you know bullshit headline websites with false news and then i see tmz at the bottom and my heart literally just sunk man it just sunk a parent overdose today and I've lost a lot of people in my life to that. I've seen people overdose right in front of me, turn purple, doing CPR on them for 10 minutes straight before the ambulance even gets there. Literally thinking in my head while you're doing that, that this person's dead, uh, dealing with, you know, that process. Like, he's dead. So I keep doing, like, it's, it's bad, man. Like, I've lost so many of my friends to drugs and suicide. It's, it's... This is why I'm so grateful for Mixed Martial Arts. This is why I'm so grateful to host this show. This is why I'm so grateful to be partners with James McSweeney, UFC vet, and do a podcast with them. This means everything to me. Being excited, having something to look forward to. Tomorrow night for UFC 228, going to these fights, uh, talking to fighters who have been embarrassed on national television, knocked out. They come back with a smile on their face, jump back on top, going through an actual grind where they actually have to prove themselves. It's so inspiring to see. It saved my life. This sport, journalism, has saved my fucking life. You look at somebody like Mac Miller, and I'll be talking about it later on tonight, but it's just addiction. It just, it, it touches so many people. Today's podcast, all my excitement, all your comments, I really want to dedicate this moment, this hour, that we had together. I really want to dedicate that to the people out there that are missing out on the happiness, the smiles, the energy, the excitement, the passion. And I pray that they will find that at some point in their life. I know a lot of people in the scene, or they think they're in the scene, that are in the scene just cause drama with fighters and other media members. I'm not here for that. I am not here for that. I am here because I literally personally love the sport. I wake up every day so excited to come and do the show, to report news, to talk about my opinions. There's a reason why the show is called Pure Evil MMA. I'm not a bad person. My name is Eddie Vileko, E-V-I-L, Eddie Vileko, 
at E L E C O V I L. You are getting my pure take on all the MMA news. Hence, pure evil, pure at evil L E C O makes martial arts. This show has saved my life. You guys have saved my life. Let's pray, or however you want. Send that energy out. Just these moments mean so much. Life's so short. I could walk outside right now, get hit by a car, and die. I could fucking who knows anything can happen. It's just so sad. So tonight, tomorrow night, let's have a good time, guys. Be fun. Don't fucking bash people. Don't. It's just there's there's too much going on in the world to to stress out about. You should be here to enjoy yourself, have fun, get away. I understand the whole trolling. Thing. Some people enjoy doing that. Yeah, they, and I expect it here on YouTube. I expect it, but man, just, there's so many people out there that don't get to feel what we get to feel as MMA fans. And our sport is so pure. It's like fighting goes back thousands and thousands and thousands of years back to the Roman age. It's in our blood to fight. It sucks when you see people give in and. Crumble and it's so sad, so sad. So glad that I got a grip. There are people out there right now that I love that are out there thinking about their next high, thinking about the wrong things, giving off the wrong energy. I come here, I do the show to share good energy with you guys. And I want to thank you all so much for joining me here today on this episode of Pure Evil Made a Preview of UFC 228. I am heading out, guys. I will be uh, going live later here on YouTube. Head over to my Instagram page at PureEvilMMA underscore. Also on Twitter at Evil under dash Echo. That's E-V-I-L underscore E-C-C-O. Also on Facebook at PureEvilMMA S. I'm Evil Eddie from PureEvilMMA, MyMMAnews.com. Remember, without evil, there's no purity. Behave yourselves.